In this video, I'm going to chat about thread representation. So we're going to talk about what threads look like on drawings and how they're specified. Now, what I won't cover in this video is all the names of the different parts of the thread. Uh, you can find that somewhere else. This is just where, you know, how we're going to show it on the drawing and how we're going to specify it on the drawing. Now, the first thing is normally it doesn't really matter that much how you show a thread on the drawing, what it actually looks like, because the thread specification, aka the note that indicates what kind of thread it's going to be, is what the manufacturer is going to use to make the thread and or inspect the thread. So they don't really care what it looks like on the drawing. They're looking for the numbers, you know, how, what's the major diameter, what's the uh, pitch or threads per inch. That's what they're concerned about. Now, the first way we can show threads on a drawing is with the detailed representation. This is the closest thing to a true projection of a thread you'll get. Now, it's almost impossible to do a true projection of a thread because of the way threads are constructed with the helix. It's just really difficult to draw. Now, the detailed representation is really close. It really looks like a thread. Uh, it was really difficult to do by hand. Uh, we can do it pretty easily with computers now, but we don't use it all the time because it does have drawbacks, even though the computer will calculate it really, really easily. So I'll show a detailed representation on the screen here. Uh, it looks just fine if it's a big scale. Now, the problem is if you shrink that scale down with the CAD program, as I'll show an example here, all the lines start to run together and this is just on the computer screen. When you go to actually print it or copy it, you might end up with just, uh, looks like somebody drew a Sharpie over the end of a thread. So that can have uh, negative impacts on the readability of a drawing. The only real reason you'd want to use the detailed representation of a thread on a drawing is if it is, in fact, a special kind of thread. So it's something other than 60 degree or Acme or one of the agreed upon thread forms. And you want to directly dimension the actual thread portion. So you want to show the angle of the thread or the height or the uh, minor diameter with actual dimensions. Now, this doesn't come up too often. Uh, a lot of CAD textbooks will show you how to make cut threads. Um, I would not recommend using them on a drawing, though. So the, what I do recommend using on a drawing and what you'll see the most are either schematic representations or simplified representations. I'll show a schematic representation right here. It's just got uh, vertical bars on the thread that indicate that that's the threaded portion of a part. Uh, you'll have a note that points to the thread that indicates what the thread is. Okay, So this is kind of like the older way of doing it. You'll see on, on a lot of older drawings, it's still acceptable today, but we typically use what we call the simplified version, which I'll show on the screen right here, that's more common nowadays. The simplified representation uses hidden lines on an external thread to show the minor diameter. On an internal thread, the hidden lines will show the major diameter. Now, this uh, scales better on CAD programs, and it's a little bit easier on you know printers and copiers. Now, the thing is, you can use either, but you can't mix the two together on the same drawing. You want to pick one or the other to use on a drawing. So that's the preferred way now. Now we'll get to the actual thread specification. If we're not going to show what the thread really looks like on the drawing, we have to be really careful with our thread rep, uh, specification to indicate what we intend on the drawing or be able to interpret what is intended on the drawing. So there's a bunch of different thread uh, standards out there. The one we're going to talk about today is the unified uh, threads. These are really common uh, just about everywhere in the United States. There are other threads. There's things like Acme threads or square threads uh, that have their own standards and their own ways of specifying threads. Okay, so there's big giant handbooks on all of these different kinds of threads that go through this in great detail. So for unified threads, how we're going to do it, and I'll show it on the screen here, we show the major diameter first with no uh, diameter sign that's omitted. We'll show it as a decimal. Um, we use fractions for pipe threads. 
So decimal, you'll see a hyphen, the threads per inch. So in the example I got here, it's a quarter inch hyphen uh, 20. So it's a very common thread size. This is a uh, quarter 20, which is a coarse thread, unified coarse, which would be the next is the thread form. UNC stands for unified coarse. Okay, so if you go in the unified handbook, you'll find all of the dimensions and tolerances for this thread that you need to know and how to inspect that thread, what exactly you're looking for. So the next is the class. So there's gonna be a number and a letter. They both have a meaning. The number is the class of fit. One is the loosest fit. Two is a normal fit. Three is the tightest fit with the least clearance. Now, two is by far the most common out there. One is used when you need a lot of clearance between a threaded part and uh, whatever it's fitting into. Say if you're assembling something uh, underwater and you might get sand in there, you got big heavy gloves, you want it to screw together easily even if there's debris. Two, used for almost everything else. Three is used for uh, when you need uh, very little clearance and very little play in two threaded parts, okay? And then the letter A stands for external threads, B stands for internal threads, okay? So this is something you gotta memorize. It should be obvious on the drawing. You'll see a, you know, a leader line pointed to a thread. It should be obvious that it's an external thread, okay? So, if you're making a drawing, something you got to pay attention to, you can't just copy and paste your thread callouts between internal and external threads. The next up is qualifying information. This is usually not going to be there, but if you have something like a left hand thread, it will be. So we assume all threads are right handed unless uh, we have that LH in capital letters. Uh, it indicates that it's a left handed thread. Uh, these are Kind of rare they're used in some applications like wheel hubs when you want things to not untighten when they spin right uh, sometimes you'll see multiple starts on a thread so there's a couple different ways to do it but it'll typically say something like two start three start what this means when you have more than one start imagine you wrap a, a piece of rope around a broom handle if you have one piece of rope wrapped around that's a single start thread so you put it on a, a lathe you have a cutter you spin it and it you know, moves across the workpiece, easy peasy. If you have a two start thread, imagine you have two pieces of rope wrapped around a broom handle at the same time. So they start 180 degrees apart on one side and they you know, have two helixes going around. What this does is increase the lead of the thread. So every time you spin, the thread 360 degrees, it moves twice as far in distance and linear distance as a one start thread. So this has uh, obvious uses in linear motion applications. So when you're using things like lead screws, if you want it to go faster than a one start thread, the downside being that it has less holding power than a single start thread because it's got a steeper angle. Okay. So sometimes there'll be uh, two start, three start and four start threads and those will be indicated if it's required. It won't be shown on the drawing. Uh, you can't show it in a simplified or a schematic representation or really a detailed representation. It's gotta be in the thread specification. The last thing on the thread specification is the gauging uh, standard. So this is gonna be parentheses with either a 21, a 22, or a 23 in it. Most of the time, it's gonna be a 21. This is the most basic form of gauging. It's essentially a go, no go gauge check. 22 is more stringent. 23 is even more stringent. A 23 gauging specification, you're essentially measuring every single dimension on a thread. This is used in a really critical application. So like single point of failure applications where if that threaded fastener failed, you know, people, uh, life would be risked. Okay, so you're not gonna see it too often, but you might depending on what industry you work in, you never know. So next are pipe threads. I'll just mention them real quick. Pipe threads, as I stated before, use a fraction instead of a decimal. And then again, they'll have that threads per inch and pipe threads have their own form. So a common one is NPT, National Pipe Thread. Pipe threads are either straight or tapered. 
if you see one you want to go look up exactly what it's supposed to be that NPT will give you the information you need to know so those letters on the other side of the nominal diameter and the threads per inch if I didn't mention it before pipe threads are nominal diameters so when you go to measure a pipe thread it's not really going to be 3 8 so that's just what we call it pipe threads are kind of kind of wacky like that okay the next thing is metric threads metric threads are a little bit different there's always going to be a capital M in front of the thread call out. The next thing will be the major diameter in millimeters. There'll be a times symbol, so an X, and then the pitch. So the pitch. Unified threads show threads per inch. Metric threads show the pitch. So the pitch is just the distance from the crest of one thread to the crest of the next thread. Okay. And then there'll be a dash and then the tolerance class for the metric thread. Metric threads are tolerance, totally different than unified threads. Again, you look up handbooks if you see something you've never seen before on a metric thread. So that's it for thread representation and specification. There's obviously way more to it than that, but that should be enough to get you started, especially with unified threads, which in the United States are what you're gonna see most of the time, okay? So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and check out the channel for more drafting GDNT content coming soon.